I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Shauna with Visual Dynasty Productions. We are here with our podcast, Visually Speaking. And I have two wonderful guests here with me. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Maddie J, and I'm the film score producer of Visual Dynasty. And I'm Kyle. I'm the assistant director, writer, and actor for, for Visual Dynasty. Nice. Glad to have you guys here with me tonight. Thank you. Yes. Glad to be here. So, the segment tonight <clears throat> is called Whatever Helps You Sleep at Night. Huh. So, interesting. Very interested. So, we're going to go over, of course, a couple of topics. And with those topics, for one, if discussion goes a little bit too long, or if you want to buy out the discussion, you can say whatever helps you sleep at night. Okay. Sounds cool. Wow. Okay. You're right. Whatever helps you sleep at night. The <laughs> right. of that came out. Yeah. Okay. So you guys ready for my questions that I have? Sure. All right. So, ladies first, sir. Sorry. Of course. Uh oh. I'm on the hot first seat. First question. So, how do you feel? about the fact that Duke University has in its full rise scholarship programs for black students following the end of affirmative action. They have scholarships for black students following the end of affirmative action. I'm gonna re- re- yeah. repeat the yeah. question. Yeah, okay. do that. So Duke University has ended the full rise scholarship program for black students following the end of affirmative action. So me, um, personally, I I feel like the question is just kind of, I don't want to say stupid, but it's just like including affirmative action in it. It's like, okay, how do, which one are you asking me? How do I feel about affirmative action? Or are you asking me how do I feel about Duke University ending the scholarship? So you can break it down however you want to break it down. All right, cool. So with affirmative action, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because they, number one, it's it, there still are things that ask you about what your race is or whatever, but the thing was put in place to basically separate and to discriminate. It was basically to say like one race gets certain privileges while other races doesn't just because of what happened to their ancestors. And I just don't agree with that. What if it was the other way around? So like, I think everybody should have equal opportunity and equal opportunity is no matter where you come from, there are certain credentials that you need to attend or to get a certain thing or to achieve a certain thing. And if you don't have them, then you don't get it. And if you do strive to get it, then you know, then you get it. I don't think the standard should be lowered because of someone's skin color. Cause then at that point, it's kind of like, you're basically lowering the bar. Like I, I take it as an insult that it's only for black people because it's just kind of like um regardless of whether you achieved anything or did what you were supposed to do because you're black you can get you have a better chance of getting a scholarship than somebody of another race who might have actually worked harder than you Mm -hmm. even if they did have just as hard of a background or worse so yeah that's how i feel so before we jump to the Duke University and the scholarship, I'm gonna let you kind of piggyback on what she's saying. Yeah, um, I'm kind of torn between my initial answer because some of what Maddie said I actually agree with. Because uh-huh. it should your race shouldn't matter, right? It shouldn't matter as long as you meet what was required for you to even get to Duke. Period. Right. That's all that should matter. Right. I'm a fool. I stand on that completely 100 percent. Yet still, I also understand that for the people who are in power, they may not feel the same way. So we have these opportunities like the full ride scholarship program to at least give black students who need some type of way to at least put themselves back on the race. 
yeah i think i don't necessarily hate the fact that they ended it because i guess i'm i guess i'm just being hopeful that they're doing they're ending it for the sake of everybody having that free that equal opportunity opportunity. okay so i guess i'm speaking off of the hope but i also know in the back of my head that there are people that are still in control and in power that don't necessarily have those same values as we do Mm. so in a way it's kind of like okay that's great but it also leaves questions of well what's going to happen now and for that i feel like we just really going to have to see where things go before i can even go any further with it okay so yeah like my thing is I think that everyone should have, I think everyone should have equal opportunity. And I think when affirmative action ended, I think that's when we got a little, we we got one step closer to what equal opportunity really is because what equal opportunity is, is exactly what it's saying, opportunity. It's not saying that once you get that opportunity, you're necessarily going to take advantage of it because that's all up to what the person does that what the individual does but you know with the thing the thing about affirmative action being in place it wasn't equal opportunity it was regardless of who comes to us in what manner they come if they are a certain color or a certain race then we're going to qualify them even if they don't qualify even if they didn't do all the work that everybody else did, even if one black person did work their tail off, made a 3.0 GPA, which is the qualifications for a college, but another black person came in, didn't even try in high school and they got a, a 2.0 or 1.7, they still got the opportunity to go to that college while another person put in just as much effort. I don't really like that. And and even if it's another white person who put in just as much effort and a black person came in and got the opportunity just because of their skin color, I don't think that that's right. I think that's wrong. Um, so, you know, that I think when equal opportunity, you know, I sound, I know I sound like a, like a broken record, but I think when, oh. when affirmative action ended, I believe we got a step closer to what equal opportunity truly is. It's the opportunity to do something that you want to do, but it's up to you to take advantage of that opportunity and do what you're supposed to do to take advantage of that opportunity. That's a, I think that's a very fair point. Um, you actually said two separate things that kind of stuck out to me, Mm -hmm. Um, especially because I know when I have conversations about these particular topics to other people, these tend to kind of reoccur, right? Mm -hmm. The first thing uh, that you said that it was actually what you just said, I kind of want to bring that up to you from a a question. Mm -hmm. So I know you said that you see affirmative action ending as a stepping stone to what your opportunity looks like. While I agree, it kind of makes me want to ask you the question. That's just a hypothetical, right? Okay. Why do you think affirmative action came in the first place? Because there wasn't any equal opportunity, right? So you could have somebody that was black who didn't even have to meet the requirements. They excelled the requirements. They exceeded it against their white or Latino or or Asian or whatever other peers, and they still couldn't get it. So that's what affirmative action took the place for. I think what caused that shift is maybe the regulation laws in between as far as allowing who's getting the affirmative action versus what it's for. I think that's what's causing the rift. And because I also agree with you when you said that if someone worked their tail off to get that 3.0, then they should get the, the full ride scholarship because they meet the requirements. Like that's kind of, you know, self-explanatory versus someone who didn't really work as much and got maybe uh, a 2.3, because that seems, I think that's a little bit more realistic than a 2.7. I think you can kind of factor in a 2.7 depending on certain uh, certain things. Mm-hmm. But someone will get like a 2.3 or a 2.2 and still somehow, somehow access the full ride. Yeah, I don't rock with that because why should you? right it seems to me like you didn't really apply that much effort compared to someone who's at 3.0 yeah at the same time everybody's lives are different some, yeah. people, some people could be challenged from a certain standpoint in education to where it's 
a really much more of a struggle in a two point to get that 2.3 versus someone who was probably better off in that particular field to get that 3.0 because i know i know for a lot of people including myself i'm more an artistic person right so like if you give me a if you give me an assignment where i have to do it artistically i'm going to excel because that's something i am very skilled at versus something where it's more like statistically speaking like you gotta take this formative test you gotta fill out these certain answers you gotta answer a certain way i may not do so well that doesn't mean my drive is different or that doesn't mean my desire is different but because you're putting me in a situation where i can't necessarily excel as much as i could in another way then i could see and i still get that 2.3 or 2.5 so does that have something to do with your color though it could no, no it, has, it, it has absolutely nothing to do with your skin color. I think your, skin, your skin color being black has nothing to do with how good you are at something. There are white people who are the same way. They put in a lot of effort and they still don't get the grade that they that they are attempting to get. I agree. So the affirmative action is not about a person who put a whole bunch of effort in and just didn't get they, they didn't get what they were going after. Affirmative action is color. So if we were talking about, okay, we're going to give everyone an opportunity who tried their best, but they didn't necessarily get a 2.7, but maybe they got a 2.5. If, if it was just the everybody thing, then that's not affirmative action. Affirmative action, though, has to do with your skin color. It's saying it's like almost like blinding yourself to the other qualifications and looking at color and saying, eh. Okay, we need a few more black people, so let's add them into school. Or we need a few more Asians. Let's let's accept let's accept this number of Asians who, even if they don't qualify, we're still going to accept them because we want to have that distinction in our school or diversity in our school. Well, yeah, because That's, historically speaking, if they don't allow these certain quotas yeah. to be met, they're going to be seen Ex as a particular type of school. Exactly which is my what point. We're against, which is it, also why they exactly, need but but. Action. But that's what I'm saying. But they, but but if that's the case, then affirmative action that makes it affirmative action even more wrong because you're putting a school at stake. You're you're forcing a school to have to accept people because of their skin color, regardless of the standards that they have. You're, you're saying I have to accept a certain a certain color in my school, not a certain color, but regardless of whether they. Um, whether they meet the qualifications or not, I have to accept them because we have to meet a certain amount of black people in our school anyway, regardless of whether they qualify. So affirmative action, actually, it sounds like blackmail. Like it sounds like we're going to get your school shut down or we're going to cancel you if you don't have diversity in your school, which is which is messed up. I think that I think that black people, I think we're lowering the bar for ourselves by being so behind affirmative action we are really lowering the bar for ourselves instead of saying okay let's rise up let's start our own schools let's not our own schools for only black people but i'm saying let uh, let's own businesses let's become entrepreneurs let's you know let's start let's start doing things and building ourselves up or and being better and giving ourselves better education that we actually can get now because before regardless of how much money you had you couldn't get it just because of your skin color now if, if you're able to afford a good education, right now they have an opportunity scholarship. My daughter is able to, I can send all three of my children now to a good Christian school that, that's out of my budget without that scholarship. I'll just tell you that. But I have the opportunity to do that when before I wasn't able to, and they are not accepting her just because she's black. Their qualifications actually have to do more with religion than it does anything else. But they don't even ask you what color you are on their application. They just ask for a child's name and their basic information and they accept them. And if they put in effort while they're in school, they're not being, and I don't like to say problem child because children have different backgrounds and adults really affect yeah, you know we, the way get, children I, yeah. get, I get where you you're get going what with yeah that. you get where i'm going with Absolutely. it and stuff like like my daughter has the opportunity to to go to a good school that's statistically known to be a great school their numbers are better their their graduation rates are better and college acceptance after you graduate from those schools are higher and stuff and they didn't ask for a color for her to go there and she has the opportunity to get a better education 
without color being involved in it, without it being about, okay, are you a black person? So now that I set her up like that, I'm a parent that cares about my children, regardless of color, I'm a parent that cares about my children. I gave them a good, I'm giving them a good education. So they're gonna stand out from other people. They're gonna be set apart from other people because I set them up like that. And then when they graduate, they're gonna go to whatever college, if they wanna go to college, they'll go to whatever college they wanna go to and they'll have meet the qualifications and the qualifications will not entail whether they're black or white. It'll just simply be, do they meet the requirements? Is there enough space for that student? Yes, they meet the requirements. There's enough space for her to go. So she's in, you know, and you know, there, there are instances I do believe where there might be a racist person that's in power that might take advantage of that power and, and use it against them. But I don't think, I don't, I really don't think that that is an issue that that really is a big issue today. I pers I don't personally think that that the issue is really a black and white issue. It has more, and we'll you know I'm not even going to jump into that because I feel like we're going to open up a whole nother can, and I want to hear I, the other I feel, like, I feel like we're going to so, I feel like we're going to leave. I feel like we're going to get <laughs> there. You know what? I feel like we're going to get there. But I is the the tricky part about this particular conversation that we're mm -hmm. having is the fact you're speaking in a way that I personally believe. You're speaking more on a way that's kind of more idealistic like absolutely it doesn't matter what color we are if we meet the if we meet those qualifications we deserve every chance to get that spot mm -hmm. and like you said earlier which is something i feel a lot of people need to really hone in on because i feel like people seem to misunderstand what equal opportunity means mm -hmm. equal opportunity doesn't mean you're going to get the same path as everybody mm -hmm. you're getting to the front line as it, everybody you're getting it, to the front door as it doesn't everybody. mean you're going to get the trophy it just means that you get the opportunity to get on the race exactly you know what i'm saying it doesn't mean you're going to be first place it the, pro the problem is we also have to understand why affirmative action came into place in the first time we also understand yeah. context. And I understand why yeah. it came in place, but yeah, affirmative. But why it we came put, in place put, originally. That was put there originally because not everybody could get to the same starting point. Yeah, but that was then, and this is now. But and is now, it really though? yes, it really is. Is anybody getting whipped on their back? Is anybody being able yeah. to just, I mean, yeah, there are people getting whipped on their back, but I'm saying like, how often do you hear, how, how often do you hear of one race, only one race, that gets, and I mean, we're talking fact. If, if we're really talking about it, we're talking facts with this. How many people, how many people or one race is right now is getting killed because of their race and that's it? Or is somebody, or or because a lot of situations, what will happen is a, a one race will kill a different race and then they'll call it racism because it's two different races that happen when the, in actuality, it was just a human being that was angry at another human being and they fought or, or whatever happened and somebody got killed in the process and stuff. There are people with big egos. So regardless of color or race and stuff, because of their big ego or whatever power they have, they they will treat you a certain way, regardless of your color. So, but because if it's two different colors involved, what the media will do, they will take that. And I mean, it sells, it, it definitely sells to people who do not educate themselves and who do not have knowledge. They don't have not real knowledge of the world. They're kind of like stuck in a bubble and just like, they're still like, like, and I'm not, and I'm not saying you are, but there are people that are literally stuck 20 to 30 or 40 years ago like they weren't even alive during that time and somehow they feel like oh yeah that's still happening today no it is not and stuff if, if a white person walked through this door and that don't live here i can guarantee you if i call the police the police will do something about it if they come here they don't live here and they're intruding on what we have going on and i call them they will do something about it they will not let them go because oh they're a white person they just they, they won't do that they won't. <laughs> they don't live here. They're trespassing. They're intruding on what we have going on. And I live here. So they will get in trouble for trespassing. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next thing. Cause I feel like, no. I feel like that's the mode you're in when you did this. <laughs> no, it's more, um, I'm just digesting what you're saying. And instead of just firing back at you, I'm letting it sit, sit in. Okay. So I have something to say back to if I need to say back. Okay. I need to have something to say. But I also know that 
what we're saying is gonna kind of dive into a, a whole separate conversation. Yeah, and I kind of <laughs> think I think we think in the same way. So but, what I'm uh, gonna say, but is <laughs> well, one thing for sure okay. is we are on the same foundation with this particular topic. We we believe the same. We believe mm-hmm. the same thing. Um, I still stand on. I just hope that's the, what you're saying. I hope that's the case because. I generally believe that everybody should have that equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think us constantly relying on race is played out. Things happening because things happening to us because of our race is played out. Now, does that mean it's going to be forever gone away? Absolutely not. Because yeah. those instances still happen to this day. Yeah. And it's but there's it's there's racism hard. in every race. It's I mean, look at what's hard. going on in Gaza. It's kind of hard in, in Israel. To it's kind of getting to a point where, like, if you notice patterns of things that are going on in this world and the things that we see, or at least the things that constantly get put in our faces over other things, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of still trying to show us, hey, race is an issue. Hey, it might be a race thing. Yeah, it's a distraction. It might be. It's a distraction it's when there are big thing, bigger things going on. That's what it is. Yeah, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, so we're going to take a break real quick, and then we're going to come back, because y'all have been jumping into my next question I have. And I've been trying not to interrupt, but yes, we're going to come back to that. What, well, wait, really quick. What is what is the name of this show today, for You're today? Right, because you all surprised. No one has said it. No one has said it. Well, I want to say it. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Because <laughs> you want to be petty. <laughs> Even though we agree. <laughs> guys, and we're back. This is Sean again here with Visual Dynasty with Visually Speaking. And again, we have our guest. Oh, Maddie J. I'm the film score producer. Yes, so I make the music. And? Uh, Kyle Martin. And of course, the segment today is Whatever Helps You Sleep at Night. So the back and forth that the guys were, they were having earlier actually has been leading me to my next question. I'm like, y'all been jumping into my next question really bad. So next one is, are we a product of our environment? I'm actually gonna let Kyle start with this time because I let you start first. I thought it was ladies first. It was, but now next. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, that's that pettiness you were talking about. Yeah, that's what that was. That's what that was. This is not geared to be, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if you can be exclusive to the petty, though. I am exclusive to the petty. No, I'm not exclusive to the petty. Right. Right, so. uh, do I believe we are a product of our environment? Yes. Do you believe that? To a degree, yeah. I do. I feel like being a product of your environment is a start. However, when we come to the realization that we are our own people, our own you know, human beings, and we have our own decisions to make. Mm-hmm. Being a part of our own environment has it has like a certain stopping point, especially when it comes to if you have the type of challenges that or type of things in your life that comes as a challenge to what your what your environment has taught you, and you continue to choose to stay, then that might be on you. But at the same time, that's also a part of you being a, a product of your environment. As for me. I can definitely say for a certain time, I was a product of my environment because I only knew what I was taught. Mm -hmm. And being taught doesn't mean someone teaching me something. It also means what I see, what is allowed, what is uh, considered okay and what's not considered okay. Mm -hmm. And if some or if some or if you try to raise a question as to why or how come Mm -hmm. and people try to shut that down, that could be. A reason that could be another thing of part of your environment, especially if you allow that to just stay that way. So yeah, to a degree, I think we are part of our own environment, but that doesn't mean we can't change. Nor does that. Nor do I believe we can stay a part of our own environment. Okay, Maddie, my turn. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I agree. I do think. Um. I I believe we can. I agree actually with what you said. I think that we can be a product of our environment. But there is a stopping point. And I think the stopping point is when you know right from wrong. Now, I will say this. There are certain things, certain habits that you get while you're young because of the adult, you know, the the adult influences that you had growing up. And they might have taught you that wrong was right. They, like you might have this ideology that certain things that are actually ethically wrong 
are okay. It's okay to relax on that. And then when you get out in the real world, you end up learning your lesson the hard way because the environment you were in showed you that this is really not a big deal. Like there, I um I grew up around people who stole like it was nothing I didn't steal. My mom would whip me. But <laughs> but I grew up around, I had friends, we would go to the corner store and their parents even did it too. They literally just grabbed something and put it in their pocket. And then they would buy something from the store, but they would have stolen other snacks. That's just and, the way life was and they didn't back then. and yeah exactly and they didn't sit they didn't sit me down and say like hey okay I did that and, but you don't need to do that or anything like that they just did it and and I and I saw them doing it and then when I got older um I had friends in college we would go to like the grocery store and they would in college they would actually steal things from like food line and stuff like that I'm not saying any names so I'm not outing you. I'm just saying that that's what we were. We were young and we did a lot of things we weren't supposed to do. I didn't steal. I'm just going to throw that out there. That's number two. I don't. I, I, hey, never, that, I never hey, stole. She's, there's trying, some, she's trying to make a fine line. No, yeah, right? there's, there's, I'm not going to lie. There's some things when I was young. I know I can't get whoopings anymore, but there's some things my mom, yes, my mom got me for. You can still get whooping. Yeah. No, no. My, my mom got me when I was younger and she taught me lessons and they stuck with me. I was like, I'm not doing that. I don't because care. I don't you're care. Whoop. You're mentally whooped because you're like, in the back of your mind, you're like, I know that if I do this, mm -hmm. this is the consequences of A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, yeah. Certain, there are some Ooh. things that I don't even know. I don't even know what it's like to, to try them because my mom already instilled in my head that this something bad would happen. And then some things I grew up and she was right. I saw it happen to other people. And I was like, yep, she was right. And I don't want to experience that. So I'm not going to do that. But yes, I do believe you're a product. I do believe you can be a product of your environment. But once you hit a certain age, you have to, if there were things that, you know, that you were taught that wasn't okay growing up, you have to fight those things. Like, because there is a right and there is a wrong. And, um, and you know, there are things you could go to jail for, it, like stealing. You could, you could go to jail for that. And do you want to take that risk playing around some knowing that's something that you shouldn't have done it, you know what I'm some saying? People, and that, that would be up to you. That would be your decision. If you want to pay the price for those things that you know you're not supposed to do, but use the excuse that you grew up in a bad environment, um, then go for it. You probably end up in jail or dead because, you know, some people, they... I mean, it's, un it's unfortunate because age isn't a factor when it comes to things like that. That's yeah, it, it yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. Honestly, I think it's more apparent because of their age. Mm -hmm. Like, especially like if you see and if you see an older an older person doing things that is not right, especially not right now. Mm -hmm. Like, it may be right back then, but it's not okay now. Like, we're not letting that fly now. Yeah. And they say, oh, well, back in my day, you know, we always used to do stuff like this. Like, okay, but that doesn't justify you doing it today. Exactly. And I think a lot of people, especially people from previous generations, have trouble dealing with that and understanding that because they're so stuck in those ways that they can't seem to find a way to change or find a way, find the path to change. The path to change that um, that mindset mm -hmm. and uh, understanding because that also affects people's their relationships with other people. Like how many times have you heard somebody say, I cut my family off? because the things that they do, I don't do anymore. And they and every time I try to talk to them about it, it's always met with a shut off or, or you're not listening to me or you're being disrespectful. And it's just, it's just not, it's just not coming. It's just not, we're not meeting at the same level. So they had to cut the, cut the whole family off. Like how many times have you heard? I've heard that plenty of times, yeah. countless times, right? So unfortunately, Unfortunately, I think it's more tragic because of those who are older. I think it's more easier to un to manage with somebody who is younger because they're still growing, right? Like they're still yeah. coming in and their brain is still forming to understand this isn't something I should be doing. Or they may hit be hit with a consequence and understand, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be doing this because then I would get this. Yeah, but if their environment is not teaching them those things, then they'll grow up and be something that they shouldn't. So there's three levels of knowing. There's knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, and not knowing what you don't know. So that also goes into play with how your your environment. 
because there's things that you learn from your parents mm -hmm. and that you know, and then when you actually know some things that you were not taught, you're like, well, wow, my parents taught me A, B, and C, but this is how A, B, and C actually should be. And it makes a difference from how you were in your environment act when you actually come out of your environment. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I think it's um, different. Um, I learned something some time ago mm -hmm. where it says you don't really know how much growth you have to go through until you unlearn things. Sure, that's big. Right, because like you said, there are things that you are taught unlearn from your from your family. What if your family was right and you're wrong, and <laughs> you just like what you you just like what you have discovered? then I would that say... That happens a lot and people say, when people oh, yeah. say unlearn, I'm just like, boy. I think, but I think that's something that they have, they have to unlearn that and relearn what they were taught. Just because you unlearn doesn't mean you can't relearn it. Huh. Unlearning is I don't more, know if you can unlearn stuff. I feel like once you, like you once can. you learn it, because learning is knowing and understanding. True, understand, yeah, you can understand, but that doesn't mean you have to do. Yeah, so you so you still know it even if you don't do it anymore. Unlearning is more like you can learn the about way, jail. The that way, doesn't mean you go. The way jail. I process unlearning and learning things, mm -hmm. right, is understanding and putting to action understanding of consistency and action. Mm -hmm. So if I'm unlearning something that I know I shouldn't, I sh that doesn't that doesn't work anymore. I am un I'm going through the process of breaking that consistency. Mm -hmm. And making sure that doesn't happen again because I don't need it anymore. Or not that I don't need it, but it's something I have to unlearn for me to grow or to be <laughs> or to be better at. So if and if I come across a situation where I feel like, oh, maybe that actually that actually was the truth, I now gotta put it in the consistency of rebuilding that habit mm -hmm. of what I was what I learned so I can relearn it. At least that's that's how I process, try to process it. Okay. That's how it makes sense to me. Makes sense. Plus, we all always we always talk about it's not how it's not the words we say, it's the actions that we do. Mm. That's a good one. It's a good one. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised, but You are. <laughs> well, that you all actually agree on a lot of these topics here? I mean yeah, that no one has to see yeah. each other whatever makes you sleep it or whatever helps you sleep at night. I mean, I to and I yeah, Which I'm not wrong. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, I'll say it. I'll I'll say it if it makes you feel good. No, I, if I, it I helps you sleep at night. But can I, can I make can I make one more point though? Sure. Yeah, like so. I just want to correlate that with the affirmative action, even though we're on another, on another. You no, know, that actually ties into each other because okay. you are going from that in the process of y'all talking about affirmative action. You were going into talking about how people were raised in their childhood mm -hmm. and their environment. So yeah, they kind of tied in with mm -hmm. each other. But definitely go ahead and put your thought. So I, so I'm, I'm a deep thinker. There's, there's some things I know because I've actually read it myself. And then there's a lot of things that I know because I was taught it or, I mean, I, I had to read it too, because when I was in school, when I was taught things, they would have a book to reference it. Mm -hmm. When I go to church, the Bible is the reference. You know what I'm saying? It's like when he's, te when he's, when the preacher is teaching things, he's, um, he's teaching from the Bible. So we're actually looking at the, what he's saying. So we know, okay, the Bible actually does say this. It's not just him just talking, you know? So, um, needless, needless to say, honestly, when you have an environment and your environment taught you, let's say your parents didn't put you in the greatest school, so you didn't get the best education, or you might be from you might be from a, a city that's known for a lot of like drug activity or a lot of things going on. Sometimes you can't focus in those environments. Like like me, I'm from New York, but I was I was raised part of my life in Baltimore, Maryland. And there was so much that happened. Like I got jumped a few times for no reason. There was so much going on that my mind was spinning a lot of times when I was in school. Like I was just constantly thinking about what was going on outside of school <laughs> when I would try to read sometimes. Like I would be just, I would actually be reading. I could literally read out loud, but nothing that I was reading was actually going in. Like, because while I was reading, I'm thinking about how many times I got hit yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, something like that. So 
I understand how you could say, okay, well, what about a person that's in that predicament? They, they wasn't their fault that all that stuff happened to them. They tried to go to school. They tried to get their education. They, they put their best efforts in and then they graduated with a 2.2 or whatever. That had nothing to do with my color. Mm. Still, and that's I'm, I only want to just throw that up. The, the things that happened to me, the environment I was in, wasn't because I was black. It was because the the truth is, my mom had a big house, and my my granddad is white. So my so there it is. My grand grandfather is pure white, like not like half white, half black, pure white. He took care of my mother. He uh, not mother, but yeah, he took care of my mother too. But he took care of my grandmother and her other eight kids that were not his. Mm. And he had my mom and my aunt and stuff. And he got married to her. He took care of the house, bought the home. He was the breadwinner, all of that stuff. And then he, you know, and then he passed away. My mom, our house in New York caught on fire. And so after the house had caught on fire, then we had to like, there were certain measures that my mom had to take. She had, she did have um, money from when my grandfather passed away. He left her an inheritance and stuff, but she was using that inheritance to, to basically have a roof over our head because whatever was going on at the time in New York, number one, y'all already know New York taxes is high as crap. So getting back up on your, getting back on your feet in New York from totally losing everything would be hard and my mom had five kids and when the fire happened my twin brothers were just born so and my dad he was you know my dad had his own struggles going on they were married my parents were married at the time but he had his own struggles going on where he wasn't in the picture all the time so it was a struggle and my mom she my, my mom is a christian i'm a christian too and she heard from the lord and the lord told her on several occasions to leave new york which was the greatest decision ever because when we came here it was it just everything was totally different but when um when my mom told her to move she didn't come straight here the first place she went was baltimore maryland and in baltimore maryland there was everything was going on there we lived next to gangs they would try to store drugs in our backyard but my mom during that time god used her she was a light to some of the individuals some of the individuals that were around there got saved and prayed with her they they you know they saw a different side that they might not have seen if we weren't there at the time so even though we did have a struggle at the end of the day god's work ended up being done being done and then eventually we ended up moving to north carolina because that's where most of our family well that's where most of my mom's side family is is here in north carolina better living cleaner air there and we lived in section eight when we were in baltimore maryland baltimore maryland section eight is totally different from north carolina section eight north carolina section eight we thought we was in a mansion when we moved here we were we moved into a five bedroom townhouse section eight so if anybody knows about section eight you only pay you only pay what like a third of whatever you make at your job you only pay a third of whatever you make at your job if you live in section eight housing so imagine going from living in a rat mouse roach infested town home with only two or three bedrooms and the floors were concrete they were not hardwood they were not plated with vinyl like they were literally what should have been covered like the, the um i don't want to say shamrock but basically the rock part of it that's how our kitchen floor was the yeah that's how yeah that's how our kitchen floor was it wasn't even the the town home wasn't even complete and then you have as soon as you walk out the door you have to see people getting into fights constantly every day people running from the cops right in front of you or people trying to fight cops and then the the um the SWAT team raiding the neighborhood like that is that that environment and a lot of people praise up north like they're like oh yeah new york and baltimore or not baltimore but they say maryland washington dc those are the places to be dreams happen everything but people who actually live there really knows what's going on then when i came down here it's like people say that the southern states are worse because of racism they say that people are more racist down south but when i came here most of the prejudice that i got were from my own color it wasn't even from white people when i did have issues but when i came down here it was like their their quality of life was just totally different i don't want to take up too much time on that subject i'm just i'm just i'm just giving a little bit of how my life was just to show you you know where i where i started or where my what people would say ancestors my mom and my grandparents how they started 
and how it trickled down to we were struggling at one point but it had nothing to do with race or color it literally was our house caught on fire <laughs> like our house caught on fire so we had to move somewhere where we could afford you know and the, the affordable areas where which is affordable housing but where the government takes people taxes and they provide funding for you to be able to live freely the people who go there the type of people who decide to live there are the people who really don't want to grow in life most of the people i'm not going to say all because obviously if we were living there look at where we are now you know obviously there are individuals who move, who use the assistance while they need it and then they stop using it and they do better for themselves but there are a lot of individuals who move and use the government funding and they intend to never to continue using it use it until there's nothing left and th those are lazy people those are people who don't have any drive who don't want to do anything with their life or they just want somebody to give them a hand a handout for the rest of their life and they are some of the people who do the most complaining like with with that that is a luxury you might look at it like oh well look at the kind of neighborhood they live in it is a luxury for you to have a roof over your head and your rent a third of your rent is being paid for or or what is it yeah a third or you're only paying a third of your rent and two thirds of it is being paid for because people who are doing what they're supposed to do and working hard, taxes is being taken out of our checks so you can be able to have that luxury. And you're looking in and you have this like idea that, oh, the government is this and that, they're, they're horrible, they're this and that, and they owe us this and stuff. Well, that money that's going to the government is not their money, that is our money. That is people who pay taxes, who, who's, where taxes comes out of our checks. So that's kind of a slap in the people who work hard face for you to say something like that. So you're diving off into a whole separate spiel, which Sorry. is fire. I'm not going to stop you from that. Go ahead. But let's let's dial it back a little bit. You, you see how it helps me sleep at night. That's good. I, I'm glad that you're sleeping. I'm glad you're sleeping well. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Hey, and I'm glad you're sleeping well. But you see how. You trickle back to what I originally stated, mm -hmm. how being a product of environment can change when you're con when you're consistently faced with a challenge and you decide to follow that challenge. Mm -hmm. Like as you said, with when you talked about your mom, also when you talk about yourself, she was being taken care of by your grandfather. He was covering from what I'm gathering, he covered pretty much almost everything. Yeah. He couldn't do it no more. She had to. She had to. She had to take the load. Now he passed away. He passed away. And he, yeah, he left her. Uh, um, he left her an inheritance. Yeah, mm -hmm. but she could have. She when she moved. When she moved and got a new place, I'm pretty sure she was surrounded by a lot of a lot of women who don't do that. Yep. <laughs> yep. She, and I'm pretty sure the women in her circle were probably trying to encourage her to stop doing that find someone who do it for you and whatnot. Those are challenges that attack the, attack her method of thinking, but that's the environment that's attacking the product, right? And it's like you, like you said, how, you know, you're constantly getting, you got moved to like section A and you got, your environment changed to the point where the pe people, our people were being the most how egregious type of people versus the ones that you think of, right? But that's also because the product of the environment allowed that to be an okay thing. But you didn't you didn't fall that way. You stayed to who you thought was the best way to be. You didn't stay being yeah. the lollipop girl, tight pants, whatnot, who follow the drug dealers, who follow the the gangsters, who follow the type of men who just didn't want nothing out of just yeah. I want to make it to the next day. Yeah, when I saw the when I saw what a, a super classy woman looked like and how she carried herself and how other women and men respected her, mm -hmm. the way she, the way she carried herself, that's when I was like, oh, I want that. That's the look I want. And I don't think a lot of people they'll take that and they'll be like, oh, you're copycatting or you're you um you're just taking somebody else's thing or somebody else's personality i don't like and, and, i don't and, i don't feed into that if you sure. find someone that you look up to find someone that you look up to that's respected that's a good example and copy them 
Like, don't, I'm not saying take their, their business ideas or anything. I'm saying that if they're sitting up a certain way, if they dress right and they dress respectable or they, or they get respect, find out what they do, find out, you know, find out about them, learn from them, like make them one of your mentors. They, you don't have to tell them like, Hey, like, I want you to be my mentor, but all you have to do is just study them, ask them questions and watch the way they, they move. And if it is a respectable way that they move, you know, if they, if they move in a respectful manner obviously because i'm not telling you to go look up look look up to uh Nicki minaj where they showing their behind like it's normal like i'm i and, and you know that's my personal opinion i don't think that's classy at all but if we're talking about somebody where i'll i'll say i'll say her name shout out to to be the rafer as a matter of fact we just had a tea party today and she she wasn't the host but she got invited to the tea party to speak when i first saw her like i was just like oh my gosh like this woman can dance this woman is married and she respects her husband she didn't fall off after she had her kids Ever since I saw Miss Tabitha Rayford, I was like, that's what I want to achieve. Like when I have children, I want to I want to be in a gym. I want to continue dancing. I want to continue to be able to do the things that I did before. Even if I don't do them, I want to be in a predicament or in, as far as my health and everything, I want to be where I'm able to do it if I want to, I have the option. And ever since I saw her, she always stood up straight and she would always she would always mention about back issues. She would say, say, if you don't like sit up straight, then you know you'll be hunched over as you get older if you sit like this all the time. So ever since she told me that, every now and then I'm not gonna lie, I do like get off guard. But when I'm paying attention, I'll be like, okay, let me sit up straight, back up straight, because as I get older, this is I don't want to have back problems. You know what I'm saying? Like all that stuff stuck with me. So shout out to her. <laughs> So for you, before you start, so that goes back to not knowing what you don't know. Yeah. Because when you were in that environment, you didn't know that sophisticated woman mm -hmm. was out there. You didn't know that there was, if you sit up straight and roll your shoulders back, your posture. It's all the women, because you didn't, yeah. you were in that environment to know that. All, environment. all the women that I saw before, well, growing up, but besides my mom, but my mom was different, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're when you're with your mom all the time, it's just kind of like a thing of yes, I got my mom and I love her and I respect her. But then you always want you're looking and you're like, is there anybody else out there that kind of like you know what I'm saying that can also be an example? And sometimes I'm a parent now. Sometimes we fall short of things. There are things that I know my daughter likes about other women that she sees that she that she might not like too much about me because I don't have that. I might not have that trait. So that so that could have been it too. But it doesn't take away from my mom. My mom was a great mom. She she worked really hard, and for the predicament that we were in, she kept, we were always happy. Like regardless of what, like even with the situations that we would go through, we would always be happy. Like she she just knew she had that touch where she just knew where to go. Where okay, my kids are gonna have fun here. I don't want even though we have to be in the house because it's dangerous outside. I'm still gonna you know take them to you know Drill Hill. She take us to Drill Hill Park. It, or the inner harbor like she would take a sightseeing so we still had fun growing up even when we even when we were homeless at one point we still enjoyed our lives it was an adventure she made it an adventure for us we weren't homeless for long it was like three it was about two or three months but she made it an adventure for us she kept us on a schedule even with that and so i'm just like my childhood was great like yeah we had our we had our tough times but it made us stronger you know, but but yeah, every woman that I saw that was as pretty as Miss Davita growing up before we came here, she was raunchy, she was a hoe, like she basically had characteristics that weren't respected and she got disrespect. Like I watched women get disrespected in front of me. I watched men hit women and right in front of me, like, oh she just a like I and they literally will tell me like, oh she she I only did that to her because she a hoe. Cause she it is, you know, and that selling that to a child. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Right. So I got another topic I want to discuss, but first I want to know if you have anything else that you want to add to that. Um, I believe that the whole being a product of your environment thing, I believe that really is meant for us to gain an understanding of whoever it is that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at least, when we're hearing news about people and things that are going on in their lives, 
especially like if it's something tragic yeah. or things of that nature and people try to pull up either false facts or previous facts about their past lives of things that they did and try to perpetuate a narrative about this person in a way to kind of justify the situation i don't think that should matter because that could he could just be a product of the environment that allowed him to be that way or allowed him to think or that was okay at the time and not be the sole like the end all be all of should we um in a way def have that be to define our ourselves or each other so that's really where i stand on it Awesome. Okay. Of course, neither one of y'all said to each other whatever helps you sleep at night, which is our topic for today. Okay, so I know you guys both were mentioning about Christianity and, and so forth and things tied in with that. So my next question is, do you all feel like Hollywood is pushing the LGBTQ plus I did it too much. Oh boy. Okay. I'm gonna, right. let, I'm gonna let Mandy start off with this one first. Okay. That that gives me that gives me time to think, to yes. really get without a shout of a doubt. She can do think they're pushing it. So without your, a shout of opinion, a doubt, how do you feel like that they are completely just over top of pushing the agenda? I mean, look at what almost every show from Hollywood entails now. It's like, oh, we have to have. A trans in it we have to have someone representing the community and they're and more than adult shows they are forcing it in the children's shows i've seen it for myself I, I don't disney channel is totally different and i'm not saying that that's necessarily um a bad thing. Whole no, no 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 a bad thing no no that is not what i was gonna say don't try to finish my sentence. no i'm, I'm trying to answer no, your question. yeah I didn't you're, ask, you're saying you don't, I didn't ask you're not a saying it's going to be a bad thing. I didn't ask a question. I didn't, I, I didn't ask a question. I am a Christian. And so like you said, because you, you brought up Christianity. So apparently you want my Christian views on this. And I mean, my Christian views is my personal views because I represent Christ. Christ created everything. God, you know, I believe God, he created everything. He created me. We were created to worship him. So really our answers should, regardless of whether you're talking about po politics or anything, it should derive from the the um, the um values that you have in Christ. Like I'm not, I don't, there's, there are some things that I would do regardless of whether I was saved or not. But then there are a lot of things that I do the way I do them because I, you know, the things I do, I want to hear from God before I do them or, you know, or is it, does it line up with the word of God? Cause I don't, cause I don't want to do something that God in his word is saying, don't do it or, or don't be this type of Christian. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, just because I'm feeling like I want to, I, because I'm in my carnal nature, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going to, this is just it. Back to our back to our subject, because I don't want to because I, I don't want to talk too much and ramble too much to where I'm just like going and going and going. I want to stay on track. So you were saying, how do you feel about Hollywood and what they're pushing or why do I believe that they are pushing it? So, I mean, clearly you feel like cl that Hollywood is definitely so. Agenda. So clearly, you know that they're pushing the agenda if you just watch TV and see what's on the news and see what's see everything see read up on their company i am in i am in the entertainment industry I'm, I'm i'm a musician i'm a film producer so of course i've looked for opportunities and some of them were inside of la and they give you detail of what it entails or what you need to do to to or where you need to travel or whatever to get the opportunity or you know what I'm saying? So, and I've learned from people who who don't necessarily have the same beliefs as me, but they do what I do. And I needed information on, you know, like a gig or something like that. So they told me about it. And, you know, of course, I took the steps that I'm supposed to take to do it or not do it. You know, so um, um, that's pretty much where that comes from, where that stems from. And I don't agree with it. I I am a Christian. I'm a Bible-believing Christian, and I believe that homosexuality and lesbianism is a sin. It's an abomination, and 
I think that if you are living that lifestyle, I think that you need to pray. If you, if, well, if you know, if you know God and you live in that lifestyle, because I know a lot of people who are who claim to be Christian or who know Jesus and they are living that lifestyle, or or they claim they know Jesus and they're living that lifestyle. If you if you're one of those individuals, I encourage you to pray and ask God to take away those those wants that you have that 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 like you might have it in your mind and stuff like that but rebuke that thought and come to God because there is a day that's going to come and the clouds are going to roll back and Jesus is going to come and he's going to take up all the living in Christ well he's going to take up the dead in Christ and then he's going to take up the living in Christ and you do not want to be one of those individuals that got left behind especially knowing that you weren't supposed to be living that lifestyle but you chose to live it because you thought you had time. And for the individuals that don't know, they've never been to church before, or they don't know how, how like they, they just have never heard of Christ. I, I encourage you to, to um, I know it's hard to just tell you find a good church home because if you don't know about God, how will you know what a good church home entails? But I'll tell you one thing it doesn't entail, a good church will not be preaching that you can live in sin and still go to heaven. They will not be teaching that you can be LGBT, a part of the LGBT community and still go to heaven because you're not. The Bible the Bible is clear about that. It's an abomination and you will not enter the kingdom of heaven living that lifestyle. If you have a past, the Lord forgives you. If you want forgiveness, if you repented, repentance is not just saying, God forgive me, it's also a lifestyle. It's when you actually change. If you do that, the Lord will forgive you and he will forgive you of your sins and you can move forward move, and you don't have to tell nobody about your past you don't have to give people all that information you don't have to if you want to to encourage somebody you can and i just feel like that was just my little that was my door right there that was my door to witness when you did that so yeah. and i have to take those opportunities and this on camera this is really good so and i was right. about to jump in because I, uh -huh. I didn't want to interrupt you but i I also did you, didn't want you to go too far into it because mm -hmm. I also want Kyle to be able to yes. respond to the question as well. Mm -hmm. So let me give you the floor. Do I believe that Hollywood is pushing the LGBTQ, the alphabet, too much? I knew somebody was going to say um, that. I was waiting on that. <laughs> do I think they're pushing it too? Is it too much or just pushing it, period? Are they pushing it? the agenda of the LGBTQ agenda are they pushing it too much, too much. <laughs> I can definitely I can definitely see the answer being yes okay. mainly because when you're constantly being thrown this idea of something that you're trying to encourage is okay and you're doing it over and over and over again throughout all the types of all the types of whatever content Hollywood want to push out or whatever you want to push out yeah, I could definitely see us. Uh, I could definitely see the um, the take of it's being pushed down my throat, and I'm not okay with it. Though it kind of begs the question of, well, wasn't blacks being pushed down, being too pushy at one time? Wasn't uh, romance itself being too pushy at one time? You could say so. So yeah, I definitely do think so. Um, mainly because, especially for me as an actor and not just being an actor, but someone who just generally loves to watch no, movies you and shows. Didn't. I definitely believe that. No, if I you see didn't. Too just compare it, a skin color to some, what somebody oh. wants sexually. Hold on. Yes, I did. No, hold you on. did not. But hold on. Can I finish? <laughs> I didn't cut you totally off. Totally different. Let him land. Let I didn't cut you off. You let though. you gotta let, gotta let him land too. <laughs> so for me, as an avid, you know, person who loves to watch movies, loves to watch. What really just wants to see really good storytelling. I can definitely see um, someone constantly trying to throw in that bit and try in a way where it's like kind of like it's supposed to matter. In mm -hmm. it, I guess I can definitely see it as like okay, well, what's the point? Like that doesn't really affect me as long as what I'm as long as the story is good. I shouldn't. It shouldn't matter. And I feel like for me, that's where it's supposed to stand. Like it, if that's what you choose to believe in, cool. But that's it. That's where it should stop at. I mean, there's a lot of, there are a lot of content, like movies and shows that I've seen where that gets thrown in and it's kind of like- Unnecessary. Eh, you know, cool, but I didn't, 
I feel like it didn't really need to be there. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's there, cool, I guess, but I didn't. I don't think it was necessary. I can definitely see it. It's starting to feel more like it's a quota rather than it's a natural part of the society that we live in. So, yeah, I definitely do think um, it's being pushy. I definitely do think so. So, that's crazy, I'm going to say this. So, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And expecting, expecting something, something different. Something different. Yeah. So, them, or it being consistently pushed down our throat, do you feel like that that's kind of a form of insanity? Because, or, or has there been a change since they've been pushing that, or in you all's opinion, that they have been pushing down that agenda? Say that question one more time. Okay. Do you feel that it is a level of, possibly a level of insanity because they've been pushing the agenda? I mean, or you all's opinion that they have been pushing the LGBTQ plus agenda down our throat? So I'll say, I mean, if you're, if you're, if, if we're being like, if that I don't that sounds kind of like a rhetorical question wait like I'm, like wait, I'm, I'm sorry no, 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 no. can you repeat that again no, no she you she's saying I'm gonna question. answer it I'm, I'm, gonna, tr- I'm, I'm trying gonna. to make sure it's like you said it's not a rhetorical question I'm trying to yeah make it seem like you're asking me a different question I don't, I don't want to give you the same answer twice right so do you feel like that because I mentioned about insanity yeah repeat the same thing expecting a different result so do you think that them pushing the agenda of the LGBTQ plus society, if, I, if you want to call it that, you think that okay. them pushing that agenda on us or your thought process or your feelings about them, that it's they're pushing that agenda on us? You think mm, that there's a okay. form of insanity? Okay. okay. So, so I think that there is a, I think there is a group of people that are actually insane. I mean, come on now. They're walking in the streets butt naked with children out there. Like they don't care. They literally have lost all of their, um, what is the word? All, all of their, if, if they did have any, they've lost their discernment. They have no consciousness of the people around them. They don't care. And regardless, we could all say we feel a certain way and we feel it's okay. Everybody, everybody in the whole world that ever lived has their own opinion that they or their own bias where they're like okay no matter what anybody else thinks i feel like this is okay but there are still laws there are still there y'all there are still things that are ethically wrong morally wrong and everybody feels uncomfortable even the person doing it when they first do it they feel uncomfortable but they force themselves to keep doing it until they don't feel uncomfortable anymore so there are things that even that you there are things that you don't even get taught, but because God made us, He put the whole He put the Holy Ghost here and He gave us a conscience where we actually feel some type of way when something is not right. And a lot of those people, it is insanity because a lot of those people they they felt uncomfortable initially when they were doing these things. And then they practiced it so much to a point where now they don't have that like bug in the back of their ear or that bird in the back of their ear telling them like, hey, don't do this, don't do this. They're just going and doing it. And it's trickled down to people committing suicide. And then they're asking stupid questions like, oh, well, why is the suicide rate up and stuff like that? The suicide rate is higher now that y'all are pushing this agenda. Do, do, have y'all ever thought about that? Like that the suicide rate went up when y'all started pushing the agenda? When before, when it when it wasn't accepted, the suicide rate was lower. Like, like if the suicide rate has gone up since y'all started pushing the LGBT agenda, then that means what is the problem? The problem is not that they're not being accepted. The problem is that y'all are instilling some type of ideology and relating it somehow to to victimization. Like. Uh, like if a person it's kind of like the color thing too I, I will say it's kind of the color thing only because when it comes to victimization it's like when you don't achieve a certain thing or you want a certain privilege that you can't have like when you want certain privileges and a person is not giving you those privileges instead of just saying okay I'm gonna work hard and get what I want in life 
you're saying you you do that victimization thing oh well they just don't like me because of this and they don't like me because of that and then people go and kill themselves and then they say oh they killed themselves because they weren't accepted no that sounds more like they they are what what is the word because i because now i can't even think of my words but what is the word entitlement that's what it is that's what it sounds like it sounds more like entitlement like you expect something to be done for you regardless of whether you work for it or not you owe this to me even though you have your own life and you have your own thing and your your own thing going on you you have to respect what I'm doing and you have to you know bow down to whatever it is that I have going on and and I will not do that that is a trick of the enemy and that is pure wrong and I'm a little bit different from Kyle because well from what you just said Kyle you said like you know if you want to do what you want to do then that's fine you do it I have no problem with it you know in, in, or and you and you're like when you watch a show you say if you see something like LGBT you might be like okay it didn't need to be there but I mean it's fine me I'm totally different I cannot watch something stuff like that it actually does boil my stomach like I'm like no turn just turn it off because I don't need to continue number one the Lord said to protect your ear gates and your eye gates I can't keep watching that and thinking that I'm not gonna have thoughts. Like even as straight as I am, it, it like I am straight and I believe that I won't ever do that. But I can't sit here and keep letting it go into my system because eventually I'm going just like those people who walk in the streets naked, naked I'm going to lose that discernment if I keep watching it and being OK with watching it. And then when I see it out in the streets and stuff, then it's like, oh, well, I saw it on TV a hundred thousand times. This is normal. Like, no, you're being desensitized. Yeah, you're being desensitized and stuff like like and God that that is not of God. Like the Lord is angry. He's not. The Lord has not changed. We we're, we might have changed as people because we're human. We're not perfect and stuff. But God has not changed. And the same thing that he said was an abomination thousands of years ago. He didn't he didn't look at the people that he created and said, OK, well, since they're changing, I'm going to change with them with the times. No, it's an abomination. He created the world the way he created. And I'm with God. I stand I stand with God. Whatever he whatever he want me to do, that's that's what it is. And he tells us to be a light and tells us to to teach other people these things, not just to have this knowledge and keep it to ourselves and be okay with it. Like, do you know how many lives have been lost because we knew the gospel, but we were just like, we just looked at people and just like, ah, well, that's their life. That's their life. You had the opportunity to tell someone about Christ, but you were just like, hmm. So I'm gonna let Kyle respond, but y'all have been literally, all evening y'all been jumping into my questions that I have conversing about the other questions previously so i'm gonna let you respond i have children too so i also i also can't i mean you have you have a different yeah. layer of thinking because you have children now so that's like another layer for you to think well i'm about. a christian uh i don't have children I, i'm, I'm a, christian, I'm a, I'm a don't have no children, but i'm a so. but i'm a christian so all that stuff that i said stands whether i have kids or not but i'll just i'm not, I just, I'm not yeah. refuting that yeah but because you throw children in there yeah I let's, the ch let's talk about yeah, let's uh, let's Let's stay there because you threw that in there. Let's stay there. No, no. You have a. It, I do believe. Now I'm throwing back out there too that regardless, kids, regardless, I still believe what I believe. Before, fine. before I had a daughter, I believed what I just said. And that's fine. Okay. And, and I'm not. Stands. I'm not refuting that. Yeah. I'm saying because you have children, there's a different level of thinking you have because they are around, and because you also monitor what they ingest from media. So yeah, you may think of you may think of it on a deeper sense than somebody else who doesn't. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, that's all I was saying. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Right, whatever helps you sleep at night. Whew. I knew it was coming, but I didn't know it was coming like that. So <laughs> I as deep in how much I'm actually enjoying this, I guess not saying the joint, but how deep this conversation has gotten and how much you know y'all have put it put in your feelings in this we have to end this we're gonna have to wrap up we have to come back to it we're going definitely going to revisit this absolutely but i want to thank you guys so much for coming today for being my guest and visually speaking thank you for letting us come by it yeah this yeah, I made it a little hot in here because I mean gracious 
But yeah, why thank you so much. Can I get a hug? Of course. Um, thank, thank you for being patient with me. Oh, Maddie did. <laughs> oh, you didn't. You don't want to get up. No, That's get all right. Let's get up. And even you too, Kyle. Same for you, you too. Same for you. I ain't gonna lie. That was uh pretty interesting. Learn some things. Well, guys, that's a wrap. <laughs>